Today I'm reviewing the Haza PR800 trail camera. This was sent to me in exchange for this video and so I just wanted to let you know what my experience was with this and what I think about it. Okay, so to start with, I have zero experience with trail cameras. I'm not a hunter, but I took this on, took this review on because I was interested in setting this up in my backyard to see what kind of wildlife I could get video of in the night. I have woods right behind my house. There's deer, there's foxes, there's owls, there's bats, there's squirrels, probably raccoons, all kinds. I know possums and skunks. So I thought, let's see what we can find out. Let's see what we can video in the backyard at night. So I think even if you're not a hunter, you could find a use for this. Maybe you've got a piece of property somewhere and you are concerned about people trespassing. You could set up a trail camera and catch video of them trespassing on your property. There's a lot of functions besides using it for hunting. So with that said, let's take a look at the specs and then I'll talk about my experience with this camera. Okay, so in the box, you will get the camera itself you'll get a USB cable, you'll get a charging cable, you'll get a mounting belt, and you'll get, of course, your user manual. So this camera can film up to 2K, and it also can take pictures of up to 48 megs. It says it's got a 2 million pixel uh, CMOS on it. Uh, what else does it say here? There's a two inch LCD, which by the way, the LCD and the controls are inside the camera. It has a trigger time of 0.3 to 0.6 seconds. It's got um, IR lighting for your night vision. It's got a 120 degree viewing angle as well as a 120 degree detection angle, motion detection sensors. All right, so here are the settings that I'm using on this camera. The mode is set at just video. I found that if I use the photo and the video option here, it it captures a photo first and so there's a delay between when it captures a photo and the video starts rolling. So you could actually miss the subject. Photo pixel doesn't matter because we're not using that. I'm not using uh, the continuous shooting Video length, I decided to set it at 20 seconds. It can be as short as five seconds and up to one minute. I chose the 20 seconds just to conserve battery. The video resolution, I just ran it all the way up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second. It can go all the way down to you know your VGA, your 640 by 480 basically. But I just cranked it all the way up because if there was something interesting, I could just grab a screenshot for a photo. The infrared sensor sensitivity I set to medium just because I didn't want it triggering all the time and I figured low would not be good enough in order to capture. I wanted to give this thing the best opportunity but also not have it drain the batteries overnight. So there is a timer. You can set a timer on this. I'm not using the timer. You can set time lapse on it, auto power off, language, date and time. Let's see. Oh, okay. So recording audio, I, I currently have it set to off. I did have it set on at one point, but I, I wasn't really interested in recording audio this time. I just wanted to get video footage. Again, just trying to conserve the battery. The device sound I have off, and I'm going to show you why. It comes configured at medium. And that's medium. And so here's... So this thing is pretty loud, and I noticed that. <laughs> yeah. Again, keep in mind, that's the medium setting. So nobody wants to listen to this while they're using their device. So I just set that to off. The timestamp is on, of course. This is for formatting your drive, and then this is for resetting your uh, it's resetting everything to defaults and the version just tells you the version of the software on here. I didn't really look into whether or not there's a firmware update for this. All right, so let's talk about the good with this camera. 
Number one, it comes with an SD card. And I think that is a bonus. You don't have to hunt one down. I think a lot of us have SD cards these days. I wouldn't say that this is the highest quality SD card, but if you don't have one lying around that you can stick in a camera somewhere, it at least comes with that. The price, I think it's reasonably priced. I was looking at other uh, comparable trail cameras. It's priced around the same as them. There are some more high-end ones out there that, that you can get, but I think for the most part, it's priced similarly to other trail cameras. And it's fairly easy to use. I managed to figure it out just by looking at the instructions. There were a few things I did, like I said, I wasn't familiar with trail cameras, so I did go online and look at some tips. And I even looked at some suggested settings for trail cameras so that I made sure that I was getting the, giving this camera the best opportunity possible to record video. All right, there's two things that I think are kind of very strong cons for this camera. Number one, from what I could see, from what I recorded, the night vision on this thing is bad. The quality, just, it's grainy. And from what I've seen of samples from other trail cameras, they're a lot clearer. Now, maybe that has a lot to do with the distance from the subject that was filmed at night, but from what I could see, pretty grainy pictures. And this thing takes eight batteries. Now I did notice that if you put four batteries in it, it would operate, but I suspect that with only four batteries in it, you're not gonna get too much use time out of it. And it won't work with batteries in it and having the AC cable plugged into it. Another thing that I noticed too is that when this thing loses power, whether it's from batteries or AC, you have to reset your date. It does not keep the date settings. It keeps all, all the other settings, <laughs> but not the date. All right, some things that I think they could improve with this camera. The first thing is where this SD card and USB cable plug in. There's a lip here and it's difficult to get the SD card in and out of here because of this lip. And the same thing with the cable. The cable has a lot of tension on it and I think that's going to eventually uh, destroy this port. I also think they would be well served in having a gasket around here because the first night that I used this, it was, it hit dew point. And when I opened this up, there was condensation inside of here. And so that was a concern for me because with condensation in here, that's just gonna ruin all the electronics. So overall, I think if you're using this camera for daytime nature videoing, uh, it would be a good camera for that. If you wanna catch what's going on at your bird feeder, if you wanna catch what's going on in your yard or on a trail somewhere during the day, I think this would be great. But based on my, from what I was able to record with nighttime recording, I was not impressed with the, with the nighttime video recording. Your mileage may vary. Again, it may be based on how far the subject was from the camera. I didn't capture any wildlife. I set this thing up like four nights in a row and couldn't capture anything. All I got was, you know, me going out early in the morning at night and my son doing silly things. And then I think you might have seen some bugs flying around. Is this worth it? Again, I think if you're gonna use this as a pseudo security camera on your property, or you wanna catch wildlife during the day, I think this is good for you. If you're looking to capture images at night, I would look for something that can get better video quality and you'd have to look around and see other reviews online about whether or not the, the nighttime video is a high quality enough for you. I didn't find it this particularly high quality, but that may just be the nature of these trail cameras. Again, I have no experience with them. So uh, I can't give this a resounding 
endorsement, but I think if you're looking to get into just kind of capturing spontaneous wildlife photography in your yard or somewhere, this is a good option for you. So thanks for watching. Even though Haza sent me this camera, there are expenses associated with this channel. If you would go over to buymeacoffee.com slash John Wilkerson and consider throwing me three or four bucks, I'd appreciate it if these are the kinds of videos that you like watching. Until next time, bye. Uh, we can do that with the settings when I do the settings. I'm just gonna keep this rolling.